more conference play, it's all wiped out because remember the key to getting in the dance, just win the next two months and then maybe win the conference title. Hey, how are you? Jason Horwitz, glad you could join us in the paint in 2007. Happy New Year. Hope you had a great time bringing in the new calendar page. And folks, I mentioned you wiped the slate clean for conference play, but it goes both ways. You could have had a great non-conference schedule and then struggled against the teams you're familiar with. We'll explain in just a bit. But first, a man who needs no explanation nor introduction, Bill Raftery, joining us from Florida before going to South Carolina for Kansas and South Carolina this weekend. Bill, Happy New Year. Uh, we're uh, glad to have you back with us another week. Happy New Year, and I hope you celebrated in fine fashion, Jason. I'm sure you did. Fine fat. Not as late as you this time around, though, Bill. <laughs> Let's start this episode of In the Paint. And I promised you last week we'd go to the Midwest, but we're not going to do the Big Ten. Let's go to the Missouri Valley Conference, and in particular, let's go with Wichita State. And, you know, we're going to show you a graphic right here. First nine games where they went 9-0 and for the first time since 19, or they tied a school record that they set in 1920-1921. But the last four games, they're 0-4, and, and a huge key to that, part of it's the opponents they play because it's been much better, but the turnovers in those first nine games, they were forcing 16 turnovers a game. The last four, they're only forcing 10 and a half a game. Bill, what do you see the biggest difference here with the Shockers right now? Well, I think uh, number one is the schedule. I mean, they stepped it up this year. Uh, P.J. Cousinard missed a game out in Vegas, and that's the beginning of that four-game uh, loss streak. And he's a very solid player. He came back. Uh, Kyle Wilson's a terrific player, good shooter, can go inside. And the staff, Karan Bradley, the Marquette uh, transfer, is a solid basketball player. But, it, you know, this is a team that I think gets better as the season progresses. They're, the strength of their conference, their RPI as a conference, will be extraordinary so it will help them and I think when you do play good people like this even though you happen to lose it's it's going to have its impact but what's interesting is when they do lose to a team uh, it's forgotten sometimes come NCAA time because now it's it's sort of fashionable not to say mid-major and they certainly are not one no they're definitely not they beat the likes on the road of LSU and Syracuse both on Syracuse, the road and yep. Yeah, very, very good non-conference schedule. They've struggled a little bit to start the uh, conference slate. And let's take a look at the uh, Missouri Valley Conference standings right now. Uh, this is through Thursday morning. Northern Iowa tops there at 3-0. Remember, last year, Northern Iowa, Southern Illinois, they made the NCAA tournament. So did Wichita State. So did Creighton, the one team that didn't, that everybody thought should have. Missouri State, the highest Missouri, RPI team. Missouri to, State. Exactly. Missouri State, the highest RPI team to, to never make uh, or to be left out of the big dance. They get their shot at Wichita State this weekend. As you look top to bottom there, where do you rank this conference among some of the top conferences? Well, you know, it's unfair to say that they rate with that Southeastern Conference or the Big Ten, the Big East. It is a solid conference. They have tough venues to go win and win. We had Southern Illinois a couple of weeks ago. It's Indiana. This is a terrific basketball team. Uh, is their conference as good as the daily impact of a Big Ten or Big East? I mean, that's what's fun about this game. That's where the arguments do occur. Uh, it's solid. I think they'll get four teams in. Uh, the potential of five, you know, is Bradley get better as the year increases. Uh, the, that, that is a distinct possibility. So, you know, you go on the road, you may get a loss in that league, and if you get losses come down, coming down the stretch, it's going to have its impact in the NCAA selection. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, we mentioned Wichita State had a win over LSU, uh, but that not even close as we switch things over to that SEC that you mentioned. It's, it's not even close to being the topper for the Tigers, and, and it continues Saturday home against UConn. Last year, uh, last week we talked about the Huskies and how young they are. This time, let's talk about the Tigers and how battle-tested LSU is. First of all, you remember Glenn Davis and company it made it to the Final Four before being ousted by UCLA. This year, though, John Brady made sure his team played very tough competition uh, and UConn is before SEC play begins because they go to a top 10 team, Alabama, to start the conference play right off. Are you in favor of a team playing that tough of a schedule, Bill? Well, I think if you've got a team that's as seasoned as they are, this is a solid basketball team. You know, Davis is just a great player. He's lost some weight. He's firmed up. Mitchell is a very talented guy. Uh, Temple is a guy who can make fill the stat sheet. He makes plays. He can rebound. And he can score. Uh, I think the big thing in watching them on occasion, defensively, there are some lapses. Uh, do they struggle a little against the zone as they did against Texas? And I think those are some of the things that, that are a challenge to this team and coaching staff. But when they play UConn, 
Uh, UConn's got the guards, they're very talented. We know Dyson's having a great year. Price is making plays and being solid in the leadership role. But Thabit is the guy in this particular game that's going to be challenged. Uh, you know, Glenn Davis is a formidable po uh, foe. Excuse me. He can put his body on a guy. He can cause some problems for a shot blocker, and uh, that's going to be a real challenge. It's it's a great test for both teams, I think, as they get ready for uh, the po the season play. Yeah, that youth of UConn really got exposed last week at West Virginia in their first loss of the season. Is as we talked about the road about last game. Week, the yeah. young guys on the road. Yeah, we talked about it last you, week. It was the first time they left UConn. It was the first time they left the state. All right. That's right. It was the first and you, time. And you know, it's interesting. Uh, LSU going with Alabama now. Uh, Jamario Davidson, who's had some issues off the court, not of his making. His, his brother's deceased. His girlfriend had that accident as they came from the hospital, and she passed away. He's now starting to play pretty good basketball, and, and that's very important for this team. This is a Final Four caliber team with Steele at the point, too. So LSU, after Connecticut, is going to have a major foe. Yeah, we'll get more on Alabama a little bit when we get to our Players of the Week. All right, let's talk about some of the games that are going on uh -huh. this week. And I, I told you last week we'd go Midwest. I changed it up a little bit on you. But right. here's some Midwest. You know, last week uh, we talked about, or we just talked about LSU and UConn. Let's talk about some of the games going on this weekend. And, you know, UCLA heading into Thursday night when they go to Oregon State, still undefeated. And Oregon uh, in the game against USC on Thursday night also. But those two teams, two of the three undefeated, clash this weekend as you see some of the other games this weekend, including the one you're going to be at, South Carolina, home to Kansas. Is there mm -hmm. one that sticks out as a game that you just have to watch to see some of the players this weekend? You know, obviously the one that I'm involved in, but uh, let's pass on that for a moment. UCLA at Oregon, I think, to me, really jumps out. UCLA, great defensive team. Uh, we've talked about their wings. Uh, the Aflalo ship tandem is extraordinary. But Oregon's got great perimeter people, uh, you know, Brooks and Taylor, uh, Hairston, another guy, they've got the freshman Porter. This is a basketball team not too many people know of because I think they should enjoy watching this particular game. Yeah, they, they do shoot the ball very well, and they get out on the on the fast break with some guys that um, they weren't expected. Like you said, Tawan Porter, he wasn't expected to make as big of an impact as he is. He definitely has played very well. All right, let's talk about a team that a lot of people didn't expect uh, well, pretty much anything from this year, but a new coach, Mike Anderson, taking over from UAB, coming to Missouri as we get into our quick hit sec segment. Let's talk about the Tigers. 11-2 and two on the year. They just had a win over one of those SEC teams in Mississippi State. What are your thoughts on Missouri? Well, you know, they got a junior college kid that's made all the difference, Stefan Hanna. He's this talented kid who can fill it up. The philosophy is what jumps out of you. Mike Anderson is one of those guys that, you know, he, the tradition, uh, put Nolan Richardson, the fire, the 40 minutes of action, really challenging people. And he has had a great impact. And as the years go on, as he gets bigger and better players, they are going to be a tough match in that conference. Yeah, they, they used to be a, one of the best in the Big 12, trying to get back to that in Columbia. All right, one of the teams they lost to this year, that being Illinois. The next team we go to, and speaking of losses, the Illini just lost on Wednesday night at Michigan, a team you saw this past weekend Oof. get pounded by Georgetown. What are your thoughts on the fighting Illini? Well, that surprised me, that game. We, we had Illinois early in the year against Arizona. I, I think the big thing here are the big guys, how they perform. Carter's had a really good year. Arnold and Pruitt, Caldwell is a young kid. They have to play very well, but they do have great rotation against a guy like Odin, and that's going to come into play. You know, keep throwing the big line bodies at him, and it should be a factor. Yeah, and they are still waiting to get some players back as, as well. Uh, you know, they they they, all, they don't really have they right. don't really have a marquee victory yet, but that'll happen. Right. That could happen this weekend. Is they? Well, you're tough on these guys. They, you they gotta be. Hey, you're selection committee, give us a vote here. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got Smith back too, so they got the scoring. And Randall's the key guy for this team. Yes, he's it is. healthy. They're very good. Yeah, Bill. Uh, they'll, He'll get this team together. All right, UNLV, the, uh, the next one here. And, you know, the biggest win, at least, uh, that everyone would have thought of w would be a victory against Texas Tech, preventing Bobby Knight at least at first from getting win number 880. But uh, this UNLV team is, is very good under Lon Kruger, a guy who used to coach at Illinois. Well, you know, Lon's got his son, obviously, the point guard, but White and Adams, two outstanding players. And, you know, he has been known for defense over the years, and they're a little more wide open, I think, than his past team, say, at Illinois and Florida. His son is a terrific deep shooter, has a good feel, excellent passer. They're always a tough out. And Air Force, the, the, the team organization and skills, everybody says a little bit like Princeton, uh, but Jeff Zeldick has 
has put a little tweak in this offense, too, but they're a well-rounded team. A lot of guys score for Air Force. Yeah, I think you're going to see Air Force and UNLV battle it out all year long for the Mountain West title. All right, Bill, let's get into our Players of the Week. Last week, you took Aaron Aflalo. This week, you're going to, well, you're going to with a, a team you're going to see this weekend. Who are you going with this week? Well, Mario Chambers, uh, you know, had him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this kid really understands the game. He gives it up beautifully. Uh, he, he's, he coordinates his leadership with shooting, setting people up, screening. Terrific on-the-ball defense. He's got extraordinary hands and footwork. It's in terrific position. And if they're going to do anything this year, it's going to go through his hand. I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Yeah, the one thing I like How about, about you. I, well, we'll go with me in a sec. But the one thing I like about Mario Chambers is his shot selection. He, he makes the right shot selection. It's part of the reason he's shooting nearly 50% from the floor this year. All right, how about my guy? And, you know, you talked about Alabama earlier and Jamario Davidson. I was going to go with him, but I'm going to go with somebody else on that Alabama team. I'm going to go with Ronald Steele, a guy you mentioned, their point guard, and he's the right. catalyst for this team. If they're going to win against Arkansas this weekend and then LSU to start next week, I think he's going to be the reason. And You know, I talked to a, a scout from the Spurs earlier uh, the last couple of weeks, and he said that he thinks Ronald Steele is the third or fourth best point guard in college basketball. Would you agree with that? I would agree, and if he's healthy, and that's the major dilemma. They've had to rest him with his knee problems, and, you know, he's not the same player in terms of being explosive and getting by people, but he still can make open threes. He can put it on the floor for his pull-up, and he can get by some defenders, but when he is healthy, he is as good. Mo Williams, uh, a few years ago from Alabama, was a solid guard. This guy's got the potential to be better. Yeah, Mo Williams having a solid year with the Milwaukee Bucks, and if he can do that as well, yeah, that being is. Ronald Steele, uh, you got to be happy for the uh, Crimson Tide. Uh, maybe, maybe they'll bring in Nick Saban to one of the games coming up soon, Bill. <laughs> I don't know if there's any money left, is there? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we should be so Bill, lucky. It grows on trees in Tuscaloosa. All right, Bill, thanks so much uh, from down there in uh, West Palm Beach. We'll talk to you again next week. Have a great time in South Carolina this weekend. You too. Have a great week and look forward to seeing you next week. Sounds great, Bill. We'll talk to you real soon. All right, folks, there you have it. That's how we move things around here in the paint exclusively here on CBS Sportsline. But don't forget, it's always on demand on this website as well as on YouTube. For, YouTube. For Bill Raftery, I'm Jason Horwood. See you next time in the paint. Take care.